Today I'm painting this image of a tree that you're looking at full of light and um, atmosphere and I'm calling it the imagination tree. So we're getting started right now with just putting in, blocking in the tree trunk. Now it's a it's a tree in a little glade so there's lots of trees surrounding it and uh, it was just something that really I think it, it just has an atmosphere. This tree seems to have an atmosphere of its own. So welcome to my artist Maria Burke channel and thank you for joining me today. I share weekly, almost on a weekly basis, tips and techniques for painting, inspiration, uh, various mediums, whatever I, uh, I have learned, I attempt to share it on this channel. So if you're a painter and you love painting, uh, I'd love you to go on this journey with me. So as you see, I'm just using the white of the canvas. It's a small canvas and I used a mixture of a type of orange and a brown mixed together to give me this. There's so many tree trunks in this. I just felt I should start with this color, the color really of the tree trunks. And, but those trunks are going to be capturing a lot of light and a lot of other colors, the foliage, the light filtering through them, the sky, everything coming into it. So they are going to change. They're not going to stay that type of earthy brown color the whole way through this picture. So yeah, I'm moving away from the browns now and time to bring in some more color, bring in my greens because this painting is obviously, it's going to be predominantly bark, the bark of the tree and the, the green of the leaves. So just blocking in, really blocking in the colors. I haven't put detail in because if I put detail into my underpainting, I'm going to end up painting over it again. So the detail, I reserve that for the very, very end. So just working on bringing in just a bit more detail now. Uh, little leaf marks, little dots of colour, quite impressionistic, really, uh, my approach to this one. There was a lot of really lovely reflected light on the day that I painted this. It was post storm. There had been a storm the day before. There was a little bit of wind. The sky was blustery, but at times there was some lovely blue peeping through. So now I'm introducing my shadows. And of course, in tree trunks, you're going to get a lot of shadows. You're going to you know, you have to make them three dimensional. So you got to figure out where is the light hitting these trunks and put your shadows then accordingly in, in, in the right places. So they all, always think about light and of course, you know, where's the sun coming from? It's coming from above or is it coming from the right or coming from the left? And then you'd put in your shadows then to match that. I'm bringing in some purple here because I felt there was just too much of that reddy brown dominating the picture and that wasn't really representing what I was looking at. So the purples, I've said this before, they are really a lovely way of bringing in shadows without completely deadening the painting by adding a lot of black. And just surrounding the tree, there was just bushes and all sorts of hedgerow, shrubs, shrubbery, whatever you call it. But very, very wild. It was on a farm, uh, on a mountain. And I was told that this is a place where children actually love to play. And use their imaginations. So bringing in the highlights now. 
just the whole way through the trees here, there was just so much light reflecting, glistening on this, uh, just a day after the storm. So there's a lot of wetness around and I'm bringing in the, the highlights there on those tree trunks. So as you can see, I have this video speeded up. But if you want to paint something like this, just go find yourself a photograph, something similar. You'll find them all over the internet. And just Google tree or, you know, <laughs> magical type of tree or whatever interesting tree shapes. And that's what I do. I just bring them up on my laptop and I'm actually working from my laptop. I'm looking at the photograph or else go out and take a photograph of something. So I'm just working, looking at the image on my laptop. Actually, the laptop is great because the screen is so big. It'd be even better if I had a monitor. I might even think of doing something like that, connecting a monitor to my laptop to be able to see this even better. So I'm toing and froing with lights and darks. At times the picture goes very dark because I've put in more shadows and then I come back in at a later stage and I go forwards again with my highlights, usually generally finishing up with the highlights. So yeah, just working from a photograph, I find is, it, it, it's just where I live. The weather can be very unpredictable, so, and it can be very cold. Even on a summer's day here in Ireland, you can get, it can be windy on top of a mountain. So it's just good to take a series of photographs of your subject matter. You know, if you're doing a landscape photograph, the sky separately, from the, the land and then you can kind of use a composite of the two pictures take one general picture of both the sky and the land all together so adding in the blues here which are reflecting down from the sky And yeah, the little pauses there are me having a think about what I'm going to do next. I'm using a tiny brush now. So I start with the wider brushes and then finish up with the, this is a very tiny brush because it is a small painting. I'm just bringing in more of those highlights. And really, it's, you're just playing around with this. That's what I'm doing. Pl playing around with mark making and texture. When I start the painting, really a lot of it is to do with the textures, building up texture. And now I'm yeah, bringing in the highlights. So I hope you enjoyed watching this painting today. If you get value out of it, Please subscribe and share. Thanks for joining me and I'll be back next time. God bless. Bye bye.